Hello everyone, I'm Zhao Chuan. Today we are going to learn about the wildebeest. The wildebeest is also called Nu. The Chinese call wildebeest a horned horse, an interesting name, because it looks like a horse with horns. Despite what that name suggests, it is not related to the horse. Its relationship is closer to the antelope. So, the Chinese do have another nickname for it, an ox antelope. The wildebeest is a very common large herbivore in Africa. They often gather in groups and walk with zebras. They are far less numerous than zebras, but like zebras, they also act in groups. This animal is often seen in many documentaries describing migrations in Africa. In particular, the fact that they are good at crossing the river often impresses us with their tenacity. When they migrate in groups, if a fast-flowing river blocks their way, they will jump in without hesitation and swim to the other side. But while they cross the river, they suffer great casualties, because some of them will trample on each other and drown, and other will be attacked by ambushing crocodiles hidden in the river. Let's take a look at some details of the wildebeest. First of all, it looks like a horse in general, in having a strong body and slender limbs, so it looks like an animal which runs very fast. But if you look carefully, you will also find that it actually looks very much like antelopes. The one on the left is a gazelle. Like this gazelle, the wildebeest also has curved horns. The horns of antelopes and the like basically have this shape. The horns on the head start near each other at the base, and where they just grow out, they are somewhat apart. Further up, the horns curve inward. This feature is the same as the gazelle, because the directions of the horns are the same. These animals have common patterns in such details, and its ears are very big, long, and sensitive. The wild herb's face is very long, that's one of the reasons why we call it a horse, because its face looks like a horse face, not as short as an antelope's face. But if you look closely, it still has characteristics similar to an antelope. For example, the structures of its nose and its snout are similar to that of a goat, not so much like a horse, and its nostrils are narrow slits, unlike the big holes of a horse. Its eyes also bulge outward, a sign of the alertness of the herbivore. In addition, the wildebeest doesn't have much hair on its body, because Africa is hot. Among different animals living in different regions, the amount of hair on them is different. Take the familiar lion and tiger as examples. The lion is closely related to the tiger, However, living in the hot environment of Africa, the lion has very little hair, while the Siberian tiger has very thick body hair and subcutaneous fat. We are probably more familiar with the elephant. We know that elephants today have an almost bare skin with little hair, but there have been other elephants, like the prehistoric mammoth that lived in cold areas. The mammoth had thick hair on its body. The same is true of rhinoceros. Wild herbs' close relatives, such as the Tibetan antelope, live in colder areas at high altitude and have thick hair. But the wildebeest has very little hair, and its skin is mostly bare. If we look at its sides, we can see many wrinkles on its skin. Most of its hair is concentrated at the back of its neck. This hair might protect the skin from sunlight, but is still sparse. Another part with hair is at the end of the tail. The hair on the end of the tail can help it to drive away blood-sucking insects. The above is some facts about wildebeest, also known as new.